have paper towels underneath each of my armpits, creases in my thighs, and we have frozen vegetables on my stomach. It's officially summer, baby. I was not planning on putting my hair up, but I got so stinking hot. This is my attempt to like fully style my hair with how I would probably wear it to the heiress tour to decide if I want to get highlights before then. Aesthetically, do I want them? Yes. Realistically, my hairstylist went on maternity leave, so do I want to risk it? Obviously she wouldn't be doing it. I don't mean risking it like that, not for the babies. I just mean, do I want to risk it with someone who hasn't done my hair ever? Oh, I have no idea if this scene looks good. Scene? Shot. Oh, you got a little lost. Where'd you go? Oh, you're up there. Not doing much at that point. As you can probably tell from the title of this video, I am doing a favorites video. I wanted to do this for two reasons. One, I have a lot of stuff that I've just been loving. And then also because I am looking for something positive in my life. I do want to thank everyone who left such kind comments on my last video and beyond just the comments, people who have sent me messages on other platforms. I appreciate them so much. I've read every single one. I'm doing my best to reply to as many people as I can. As those of you who have sent those messages, you know, most of you included, like feel free to not respond. Like I understand that this is very heavy and yeah, it's just very kind and I hate that there's so many of us in this club or in an adjacent version of this club, but it also feels, you know, like the true sense of the word community. So I just want to thank you all. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch my last video, but this video, <laughs> we're being positive and happy and optimistic. So low key, that's actually a lie because I am going to throw in some things that I hate at the end of this video too. I've broken this video down into different sections, different categories of the favorites. But first we have to start with the sponsor of this video, which is without a doubt, a tried and true favorite. Countdown, you know what I'm about to say. You know, you know, you know. Element. Would I be able to film this video today if I hadn't had my Element electrolytes? No. If it's not obvious by the ice that is currently resting on my stomach, it is 86 degrees today. If you are unaware of what electrolyte deficiency can look like, I highly suggest you look them up because you might just run through the list and go, oh, I'm checking off a lot of these boxes and you mean to tell me I just need to pour something into my water to make it taste delicious and then I will feel better? It really is that easy. Element is an electrolyte drink mix that has everything you need and nothing you don't, which means no sugar, but lots of salt. It also has no gluten, which is fantastic. If you know, you know, they're not all created equal. No coloring, no artificial ingredients, and no fillers. And it's truly just delicious as much as it is effective. Tens across the board. And as somebody with IBS and different dietary restrictions, I love that Element is really perfectly suited for anybody and everybody, whether you are keto or you follow a paleo diet or you're gluten-free. And right now Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any Element order. That's eight single serving packs for free with any Element order. It's a great way to try all eight element flavors or hey, share them with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash Megan. This deal is only available through my link, D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T.com slash me. I'm Schwitzing. So the hair is going up for the next couple things we're talking about. I apologize if the camera keeps moving and shaking. You are truly just propped in between the pillow of the couch and the couch. So starting with fashion favorites, my red Converse. If you're looking at this going, holy hell, Batman, whose shoes are those? Whose horse is that? Mine. Yeah, my feet are huge and flat. They're bigger than my head. I've been told I walk into a room feet first. And do I also walk with my feet turned out? Yes, so it really aids in the visual element, wider than me. I had my Stan Smith phase, I had my Air Force One phase, and I've been really wanting to get a new pair of white sneakers, but I haven't done it yet. In getting sick of all of my old white sneakers, and also those ones have gotten incredibly dirty, I have pulled out the Converse and I just love them. Red is one of my favorite colors to wear, so having just a little pop of them is so fun, and they're so comfy you forget that you're wearing them, so I love these. My next fashion favorite is something that you have seen if you are up to date on my videos, and that is the Abercrombie Essential Crops tee. It's the perfect length where I can tuck it into clothes and it looks really natural. And if I'm like stretching, it doesn't just immediately pop out, but it's also cropped enough that I don't have to tuck it in either. I love how oversized the sleeves are. I love how thick it is. You cannot see through it. It is just perfect. My other favorite top is also from Abercrombie and that is, I don't know where. Definitely dirty, I know that, but 
There's a stain on the front right now that I have to wash out. But it is this one. This one is also so cute. I love how fitted this one is. It definitely gives obviously a different vibe, tank top versus t-shirt, just a similar kind of staple. And Abercrombie's really been stepping up their game, which everybody has said. I have been trying to tell that to Mott. We went to the mall the other day for fun and also because it was like 94 degrees. I ended up not getting anything. He tried on a bunch of stuff and got so many cute things. And I finally have one because he got shorts with a shorter inseam. You know, I'm hoping one day I'm gonna get into like the full 70s, 80s, like a hot short. We have yet to get to that point, but we're above the knee now and I love it. I've just been gassing him up every time he wears them. I'm like, look at those thighs. Speaking of Abercrombie shorts, my last clothing favorite are these ones. These were in my last vlog. They're these seven inch dad short high rise, my regular size. I have only been reaching for these shorts. This is all <laughs> that I've been wearing in a white tee or a white tank. I'm like a walking Abercrombie advertisement at this point, but they're just so comfy. They're so cute. They have this little slit in the back, but because the shorts are longer, you know, you're not seeing anything. And there's just something fashion-y about a denim short that is not booty cheek bearing. And I don't think it's because of how it looks. I think it's just because I'm not constantly digging in my butt crack to pull out my shorts, you know? I have three favorite bags and purses that I've been using lately. The first, let's start with the biggest first. This is the Ellen L. Bean Boat and Tote. It has M for Megan or for Mots. It makes monogram things incredibly easy for us. This was actually given to me as a PR gift for a different brand. I think it was like a beach themed thing tons of years ago. I have just been loving it. I really wanna get another one, but with the longer handles so I can just carry it around as like a, a, a purse purse in a way that is a little less like carrying shopping bag. The short handles can get a a little frustrating like that, but it's so nice. It's so structured. It is so sturdy. You can carry just the perfect amount of stuff in this, or if I want to put my water bottle in it, what do you think I should get inscribed on the one that I get? Next up is this purse, which Mats actually got for my birthday last year. And my birthday this year is in less than a month, which is absolutely insane. This is a vintage Gucci bag and I just, I love it. He had asked me what I wanted for my birthday and I had told him what I'm gonna show you next, like a nicer version of that. And I showed him some Stodd bags. They were like, you know, a couple hundred dollars, pricey, but not crazy pricey. And he was like, okay, bet one and up. Found this vintage Gucci bag that I think you'll love. And I was shocked to take it aback, mostly because I was like, oh my gosh, return this, how much money did you freaking spend? But now I love it. So it can be a shoulder bag in the most convenient length, or it can also go crossbody. I love this. So the bag that I wanted a nicer version of, this little one from Amazon. Oh my God, I am getting shiny. I got this bag a couple of years ago and I have worn it to bits. I wanted to know if I could handle having a light colored purse, if I would like having a shoulder bag. This was like my first, I guess, re introduction to this style. I obviously had the limited two ones that, you know, had like a monkey and your initial on it. Off the sale rack, baby. I do still want to get a nicer version of this. It fits just enough stuff. And I find myself reaching for it a ton in the warmer months, just because it adds a little bit of like brightness to your outfit. This one's very cute. Now we have the big box full of everything else. Moving on to skincare. My next favorite is a holy grail in the sunscreen world, Super Goop. This is a Super Goop Play sunscreen. This is what I use all over my body. It makes me glow. It doesn't make me oil oily or sticky. It soaks into your skin so fast. I know some people will also use this on their face. I have very sensitive skin, so I do not mess with that. I think cream sunscreens for body are so underrated because a lot of people, like we end up not using enough or you end up like missing whole sections when you're just using the spray. The morning, the first time I'm applying body sunscreen, that will always be with a cream. And then if I'm out and about or I just am getting back in my car after I've been like not seeing the sun for hours and I need to get in the commute home, that's when I will do the super goop spray. That makes your body glow like J-Lo. It's so gorgeous, it's so stunning. It is in the car right now, so I'm not gonna grab it, but it's flawless perfection, wonderful, amazing. I feel like in the last two years, I've really found so many great face sunscreens that perform really well under makeup. And one that I'm definitely going to rebuy is the one that I truly just finished, and I do not know why I tossed it before I did this video. INS free, INS free that one. It hits all of the marks for me. It is hydrating. It's not oily. There's no white cast. It soaks into my skin. It doesn't break me out. Makeup goes on top of it perfectly. And here's the real kicker. The number one fantastic thing that most of the other sunscreens I love cannot say. It's easily available. So many of the other ones that I love are Korean sunscreen. So I'm having to get them from other websites and things like that. And it can be a little dicey, especially like you're not supposed to order sunscreen on Amazon because like you do not know if those are official. And sunscreen something that you, you don't want to mess with and have it be not sunscreen because it does have to serve a purpose. That's not just for looks and, and, and funds. It's for preventing cancer. So, um, ooh, that's a word I probably should not have brought up if I'm trying to stay positive. 
this sunscreen is available at Sephora and it is not Sephora prices. They also have a jumbo version and I'm pretty sure the jumbo version is like the cost of the tiny little high-end sunscreen. I've obviously loved all the other sunscreens I've recommended and shared, but there's something so nice about one that you're like, oh, if you run out, I'm just gonna head on over to Sephora, pick it up, grab it that same day. And as someone who forgets things constantly, that is a big winner for me. Next up are two different cleansing balms. This one is all done. This is the Versed Day Dissolve Cleansing Balm lush, buttery, opulent. There is something about this. Not all cleansing balms are created equal. Not all cleansing oils are created equal. Even if you're not wearing makeup, you're just wearing sunscreen that day, you should be double cleansing using an oil or a balm. I personally recommend a balm. It's a little less messy, but boy oh boy, did I forget how good cleansing balms could be. This I think might be ranked like my number one, number one. There's something about it that is so good and so effective. It doesn't sting my eyes when I'm using it at all. My makeup dissolves so quickly. I don't need to like keep going in and adding more and you know, you add the water and then you, it just works so well. And it feels like such a luxurious experience when you're doing it. And it is affordable. And the other cleansing balm is from Elemis. This is their pro collagen cleansing balm. This is bougie on a budget. This is bougie on a little bit higher of a budget, $40. This is just so nice, large and in charge and it smells like a spa. I have sensitive skin, so I usually steer so far away from really like fragrant products, but because this is something that I'm rinsing off, cleansing balms and masks are usually fine for me to have fragrance in them. It does have some lavender scent in there, which I am not a fan of lavender, so I would like this a little bit more if it was fragrance free or it was just a little bit of a different fragrance, but it's not entirely just lavender. And it it gets me in the, the, the sleep hygiene routine of going to bed because I use it obviously at night. So there is something kind of hypnotic, like going through the motions of smelling the smell every night and knowing like, okay, it's time to wind down and go to bed. Does it mean I'm gonna go to bed earlier? Absolutely not. Last night, I had a dream that I had gangrene on my leg and I had to get it amputated. The gangrene looked like a mix between moss and astroturf. And I was like complaining about my leg hurting and moss was like, well, like lift up your leggings. And then I showed him, I was like, yeah. And he was like, oh my God, you have to amputate your leg. How'd you not notice this? And I was like, wearing leggings. Who wants to break that down? What does that dream mean? I don't know if I've made a favorites video in the last couple of years without having to mention my loves, Tower 28, the one that started it all for me, the SOS spray. I have turned so many of you onto this and I will never stop talking about how amazing this is. Is your skin angry? Spray it. Is your skin feeling dull? Spray it. Did you just pick your skin? Spray it. Are you having an eczema flare up? Spray it. Body acne? Spray it. Are you sweating throughout the day? Spray it. It works for absolutely everything. The happy solution for angry skin. I have started spraying this constantly now throughout the day. I do it in the first or second step of my morning and nighttime skincare routine. At any point during the day, if I start feeling like a little sticky, a little sweaty, I'm spraying it on my face. If I'm feeling tired and I just need a little like wake up, I'm spraying this on my face. You know what I should be doing? I should be spraying this on my chest again. I hate being sweaty. My skin hates being sweaty. I break out. This is also fantastic on back knee because it's a spray. It's so easy to control, which is perfect for like a little like, I don't know how I'm getting back there. Then they have their serum. This is also fantastic. It does a lot of the same things. It's a little bit more concentrated. Sometimes I'll do the spray and then add the serum on afterwards. Sometimes I'll just do one or the other, but they're both gentle enough that you can use them together, but they're effective enough that you don't need one to use the other. But I just love, love, love. Onto the hair care favorites. I'm realizing that one of the favorites is currently in my hair. So you can't totally, you're just gonna take my word for it. You know what? Oh God, it's so hot. I got a pack of these claw clips from Amazon and I love them. There's just something about like the shape of them. They're big enough to hold all of my hair. They look really sleek and cute and they're just effective. I love these gold ones. These also came in a pack. I think there's one or two other ones that are like rogue in some of my purses, but these are just so pretty and they're the perfect size for a half up for me with like the length that my hair is now. I could probably get most of my hair up in some of the bigger ones. Sometimes I just want to like lift the top part of my hair. I don't want hair falling in my face, but I don't want all of my hair to be up. So these are perfect for that. And I do think they look a little more chic put together, nice, fancy, and they're actually metal. They're heavy and, and sturdy in a good way. The last hair accessory favorite are these little clips. I'm obsessed with these. They're so cute. Are the vast majority of the reviews on Amazon pictures of them in children's hair? Yes. 
You can just stick them up random here, pieces of your hair that are coming down from a claw clip or something like that. Or I've also like braided front sections of my hair and attached these all the way throughout. You could section the front part of your hair and do like a whole crown of these. They're just so cute. They come in other colors, but there's just something about the gold and the sparkly. It's just so fun. And they come with a ton. I think I've got like another whole little row of these, again, rogue and some purse. I've been trying to get back into doing like fun, different or cool things with my hair. And so having little accessories like this just make it really easy. My next hair favorite is the L'Oreal Bond Repairing Line. This is so good. I do not have the shampoo with me because I went to pull it out of the shower and it was like still dripping and wet and I don't like wet things. So I was like, mm, leave that in there. So I just have these to show you as visual aids. This is the concentrate and the conditioner. And what this claims to do is strengthens inside and out by reinforcing weak hair bonds. I have bleached hair. I would like to have it bleached more soon. If you're on Hair Talk or you are also a long time hair bleacher, you know the importance now and the big push for bond repair, especially for color treated or heat damaged hair. So I have been a huge fan of Olaplex. I also love the next favorite, K18. But this is a more affordable way to, you know, dip your toe and start working on repairing your hair without spending a ton of money. The shampoo and the conditioner are both great. They smell really great. They help my hair be far more manageable and I can tell the health of my hair is drastically improving truly every time that I use it. But the concentrate is where you're gonna get the most bang for your buck. They advertise it as a pre-shampoo treatment. So you obviously apply it before shampoo, then you shampoo, then you condition. But I'm a little bit of a rebel because I saw someone do it on TikTok. I am susceptible. This is where the government is like, mm, let's dial back on that app. And I'm like, no, please. Tell me what to do. I saw a hair care content creator talk about how she actually uses this after shampoo, but before conditioner. And I wanna say she reached out to the brand and they were like, yeah, go for it, do do that. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, something like that. Or she just did the research or I'm just horribly misquoting her, but that's what I do. Because I shampoo my hair at least twice, I only wash my hair once a week, really. Anything I'm putting in as a pre-treatment, my hair's not clean enough to really absorb it all. Whatever it is absorbing, then I feel like I'm shampooing it out. So if it doesn't work for your hair, don't blame me. And I really like it. It's really, really, really good. And it's nice to know that you can work on repairing your hair without spending so much money. And speaking of so much money, you guys, it really is that good. I know I hauled it in my last video. I have, I was about to tell you how many times I've washed my hair since then. That is actually none of your business, but I've been using this over and over and over again. And oh boy, is it so remarkably good. You shampoo your hair, you do not condition. You apply this to your hair afterwards when it's still damp. Let it soak in your hair for four minutes. Then you can brush it out as well as add other products in. And then you just style your hair like normal. This is one of those things that the first time you do it, you notice a world of difference in your hair. Specifically the ends of my hair, which are like the most color traded parts. They were so happy with me. It was like the starfish earrings from Aquaman. They're like, aqua, aqua. Megan, Megan, thank you so much. We are parched and we are dying. I could feel my hair was softer and smoother when I was blowing it out. It was not as like brittle or dry and it just, it was, it was everything. And if you are someone who has very bleached hair, you know that the wind can look at you and your hair tangles. For me, that is usually the cue of like, okay, yeah, definitely time for me to trim these dead ends. This made that so much easier. Like I can just run my fingers through the ends of my hair no problem. There's a reason why everyone talks about this. There's a reason why it's so expensive. It's because it truly genuinely works. I will go out on a limb and say that the Olaplex system, I don't remember what number that is, Olaplex 3, the repair. I do think this is better. Also the ease of use makes it worlds better than anything else to me. Most hair treatments, things like this, like they're, they're a to-do. They're like, okay, you have to soak this in your hair for like 30 minutes. You have to like do all of this stuff before you have to, and you're like, Ugh, okay, let me set aside time to make sure I do this. This, no. It like cuts the time of my shower in half. I love you. My next hair care favorite is one that I have loved for so long, the Living Proof Dry Shampoo. This is the only dry shampoo you need. I am admittedly not a huge dry shampoo girl, even though I only wash my hair once a week. I hate how it feels on my hair. My hair never actually gets clean. You just have that dry shampoo feeling. So I'm only going to like stomach that for one day, the day before I wash my hair. That's it. This, mm -mm. you spray this onto your hair, Suddenly you just wash your hair and you're like, mm, no, I didn't. I just put dry shampoo. It does what they're supposed to do, which is truly make it feel and look like your hair is clean. Not dry shampoo clean, like clean, clean. And it smells 
so good. It smells expensive, it smells luxurious. It's so good. And really the hack with dry shampoo is you want to section your hair, spray it into like all of the hair lines. Do not rub it in. Do it the night before. Truly start doing it on clean hair. Do it every single night, don't rub it in. And then the next morning, brush your hair through. It has time to soak up all of those evening oils. My last hair care favorite is a little random. They are these duck bill clips. More specifically, this little trick spraying hairspray, letting it totally set like that, and it creates some volume there. I don't know why it's sort of focusing over there. Doing it on like different sides if I'm trying to achieve volume, they're perfect. Now onto makeup favorites. I have talked a little bit about, I think on my Instagram stories, that I ended up on that side of TikTok of like that Dear Peachy makeup tutorial thing of like figuring out what kind of archetype you are and what kind of makeup will suit you the best. And for me, it just kind of confirmed my thoughts and feelings that I don't like anything harsh on me. I don't like really sharp, bold lip colors. I find that I look really clownish in a lot of makeup and I always like how I look best with like bronzy, peachy, and really blended out, blotted kind of makeup look. And the thing that really, really, really set it over the edge for me was the lip color and lip style suggestions. So I thought it would be like good just to like do a little demo to show you. These are the Tower 28 Juice Balms. I have more colors than this, but these three colors are the ones that I have loved using the most most in mix, shake, and squeeze. Let me wipe off a little bit so I can get a, a clean slate to show you the whole look. I start with the lip liner. This one is Tower 28 Work of Art, and I line kind of overline the top bottom and connect the sides. These ones are definitely more creamy. The MAC ones, I also use Whirl. This is definitely a little bit waxier, so it has a little bit more longevity, but if your lips are dry at all, it's not really gonna work well. Then I take a lip brush, which who knew that I had any use for a lip brush at all? You could also use your finger. I've used my finger before, but there's something about the brush blending out those harsh edges might have gone a little too far out. I blended that lip liner out so there's like no harsh lines at all. And then taking the color squeeze of the juice balm and I put it right in the center like that. And I just start to kind of blend that in just a little bit, add even like a little more right to the center to really show that kind of gradient. And then I just add something on top. So if I want something super, super hydrating, I will do the Summer Fridays lip balm. This is in my purse always. I love this. It's so nice and creamy. It does look like a lip gloss, but it doesn't feel like a lip gloss. Like it just feels like a uber hydrating and nourishing lip balm, but it gives you that gorgeous sheen on your lips. So if my lips are just dry, that's what I use. If I want something ultra glossy and just so comfortable on my lips, if I'm gonna be talking, if I'm doing the podcast, I will use one of the Tower 28 glosses. Usually with this color, I would do clear or the one that has sparkles in it. If I want something that's kind of in between a lip oil and a lip gloss, I will use Fresh Pressed from Tarte. And then if I just want gloss gloss, sparkle shimmer, I will use Buxom, the plumping ones, and specifically one that's got some sparkles in it. I think that's what we'll do now. It just makes your lips so juicy. And that is how I achieve my current favorite lip. I just think it's so cute. I have brought back a OG OG for me. The Becca Cosmetics, I think, yep, Moonstone highlighter. I've never bought a new one. This is the one I've had for probably a, an unsanitary amount of years. And I've been using it on a pencil brush on the tip of the nose, down the bridge, pop a little in the inner corners. This is a blinding, gorgeous glow of a highlight. I rarely use this on my cheekbones because it can just be a lot. Taylor Swift Eras Tour, oh yes, you believe. I will be doing that there. My next makeup favorite is a duo that I am wearing today on my face, and this is the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear Foundation, and I mixed it with the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Glow Shin in shade 902 Light Glow. This is the summer foundation combo for me. This foundation stays. Sweaty summer, a pillar of security right there. I still have dry skin. So even though I get hot and sweaty in the summer, my skin is not oily. I do need something that has a little bit of hydration in there and I don't ever want my skin to look flat because it's not producing the oil it would need to compensate to give that like natural glow. So I fake it. It offers a level of like illumination to the skin. It's not glittery, it's not shimmery in that way, but it just really makes this look more like skin. It's just a perfect match because I can use the longwear foundation and know that my makeup's not going to budge. My skin is not going to be cracked and dry and just not looking good because I've added this in there. And I really don't even need to add much powder. Like I don't have to set my face and it just looks 
so nice. I don't know if you can tell, like my skin just looks really good. For days I've gone for like a no makeup makeup look or I just wanna have a little something on, this is what I reach for. I've talked about this before, I love this. It's the Tower 28 Sunny Days Tinted Sunscreen. Do not look at how gross the bottom is or even the back because it is well loved. I know some people use this as their sunscreen for the day. I do use another sunscreen underneath this just because I'm not gonna use the amount of this that I would need to reach like the full SPF benefits. This just looks gorgeous. I apply it with my fingers. It soaks really nicely into your skin. It is definitely glowy, but you can powder it down. It gives the perfect amount of coverage for some days when I'm not feeling super cute, but I don't wanna spend the time or the energy and putting a lot of makeup on. It's really, really, really good. And a perfect summer product because there are lots of days that I have zero desire to wear makeup makeup, but I wanna, I wanna look like I'm wearing a little something, but I don't wanna feel <laughs> like I'm wearing a lot of makeup. I am almost embarrassed to tell you that this next product is also from Tower 28. I feel like an unofficial spokesperson. Would love to collab, <laughs> just a big fan. My most recent addition to my Tower 28 collection, I've hit pan. This is their Sculptino in the shade Broad. This shade specifically on me is warmer than any contour that I would typically use. I apply it pretty much like I would a bronzer contour combo. And some days I won't add any cool tone contour on top of that. Some days I won't add bronzer on top of it. Some days it's literally just this, but I have used this every time I've applied my makeup since I got it. I'm wearing it today and it just looks beautiful. This will probably be empty by the time summer comes to an end. And I just, I love it. They have yet to miss. Next up is the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter, the best brow product I've literally ever used. These brows, this is the only thing in it. The only thing. You can see the shape of the wand. It's flat. I brush up this way and then I use that flat side to really like stick it onto my head. And once you coat these, you lay it down, they're not moving. I have never found a brow product that keeps my eyebrow hairs up like this one. Every other one, eventually by the end of the day, even immediately, my brow hairs will fall down. They do not wanna stay up. <laughs> they're like my eyelashes, but this, there's magic in it, magic. These have fully thought. And back to my OG favorite mascara. This is the Essence Lash Princess Waterproof. I talked about this in my last video, but I used it for years and then I moved on to other mascaras, brown ones, because I think those look better on me. I finally repurchased this and I've been using this again and like, there's just nothing like it. It keeps those lashes like long, separated. They feel like extra, extra, extra long. I think it's a fiber mascara. And because it's waterproof, it holds a curl. I desperately want them to make it in a brown. But if anyone has any recommendations of waterproof mascaras that hold the curl, they add a bunch of length and they are in brown, please let me know. But until then, this is now onto the random stuff. I have brought back the replica beach walk. There's hardly a dent in this. And I have had this for, I would probably say like 10 years maybe. This was like one of the early replica scents and I just fell in love. Every summer I bring it back out and it just obviously reminds me of summer. They describe this as sun-kissed salty skin. Like this is hot mermaid perfume. To me, it's like a really good take on a fresh or somewhat of kind of a clean scent. So it doesn't smell like laundry but it's also not sweet, it's not musky. It, it just smells like skin in the summertime without the sweat. The summer of your first kiss, you're riding on handlebars on bikes, like you're having slurpees from 7-Eleven, you're staying up too late, you're having sleepovers on trampolines. Like it just smells like that pure exuberance of like youth in the summertime. Like it just smells like a beach vacation. Oh, I love it. And there's something about the replica fragrances that don't smell like perfumes. You just smell like this is what you smell like. And it happens to be intoxicating. My next favorite are my vitamins. <laughs> uh, less the specific vitamins and more um, taking them every single day. Turns out, consistency thing, you guys weren't kidding. That's what, what I should have been doing this whole time. I cannot give myself credit for this. Mots works fully remote now. Every morning, handing me all of my meds to take. Have I ever been this good at taking my Adderall every month? Never. Never in my life have I remembered to take it as often. Do I still forget some days? Yes. He has made this so much easier. Boy, oh boy, does it make a difference. My allergy meds? Oh yeah, when you take those every day, definitely helps. B12 every day? Also life-changing. I've been super low in vitamin D, so my doctor had me start taking them every single day. I was kind of low in B12, and they were like, it's probably good to take more, and Mots was like ridiculously low. He um, was just swallowing them, and nothing was happening, and then I finally noticed the day that he wasn't uh, letting them dissolve, and I was like, what? Within a week of him <laughs> taking them properly, he was like, oh yeah, 
can feel the difference now. I have accidentally and unabashedly become a massive fan of Brooke and Connor Make a Podcast with Brooke Averick and Connor Wood. I mean this in the kindest way. It is like a brain break. It just tickles my brain in the best way possible. I find myself like laughing out loud to so much of it. It's just a perfect podcast. I would recommend to anybody. I would also recommend my podcast to anybody. And also Jesse and Lily's Do We Know Them? Going from watching like an internet dumpster fire, like Lily and Jesse covering that, to Connor explaining how him and Brooke thought that they were getting invited to Cannes and they're really getting invited to Raising Canes. You know, it's just good. There's no way I could do an entire favorites video after the release of Speak Now Taylor's version and not tell you what my favorite song from the vault was. And it is When Emma Falls In Love. I'm loving it. I did discover like my favorite meal recently. It's this Ina Garden pasta dish that Moss and I have been made since discovering it a couple of weeks ago. We've probably made it like five or six times since and it's delicious. My biggest ick has been from meat specifically well, pretty much all meats have given me an ick since the uh, COVID in my life. I go through waves post COVID of like food aversions, being like all food sounds awful and disgusting and like makes me feel like I'm gonna be sick. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, okay, I can, I can stomach it. I'm currently in a cannot stomach it, like everything grosses me out kind of thing. This does not. Let me know if you'd like to see a recipe video. Obviously it's not my recipe, but like if you'd like to see me make it in like a vlog or something, I would definitely do that, but it's... And my hates for this month uh, would be finance, Colleen Ballinger, Jonah Hill, and uh, trauma. Those can uh, just stay away forever. <laughs> yeah. I talked for so long, my camera is literally going to die. It is flashing at me right now. So that is it for my favorites video, but I hope you all enjoyed. Comment down below some of your summer favorites. I would love to hear, get some recs, try some other things out. I would also love to know what is your favorite vault song off of Speak Now Taylor's version. And yeah, I will see you all next time. Goodbye.